Jared Polin, fronosphoto.com, and this is the Nikon D5, and people have been requesting low light sample images to check out for yourself. So if you don't wanna watch me edit them and you just wanna skip right to the final product, go over to the website, click up on the screen right now. You can also download all the full res images as well as all of the raw files that I'm about to edit. Yes, I am giving you my raw files from this camera so you can do whatever you want. Of course, you can't sell them, but just to check them out, go ahead and take a look, and now I'm gonna edit it. So like I said, you can download the raw files, you can go over to the website to see the full res, fully exported final copies, or you could sit here and watch me edit in Lightroom. So here we go. This shot is taken at 12,800 Todd Wolf ISO. Uh, one two hundredth of a second at f2.8. This is over at the Fro factory. This is John. He hit his forehead. He wasn't too happy about that. What you have to remember is when you zoom in on something one to one, of course you're going to see pixels and grain and stuff like that. This isn't bad at all. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to process it the way that I normally process my stuff. The goal of shooting raw is to make sure you get it as damn close as possible in camera. Anybody that tells you they don't shoot raw because they get it right in the camera is full of crap. The point is you want to get it damn close in camera and then you can shoot and then you can edit the raw files and make it great. Now, one thing that the D5 does not do that the Canons do better, especially the newer ones, flicker detection. Meaning it won't take a picture when there's a flick, flicker going on with those crappy lights in the background. They're getting replaced. Don't worry about it. Um, in the future they'll be replaced. So here we go. Could it be black and white? Could it be color? It doesn't matter. In this case, I mean, it could be both, but I just want to stick with the color right here. Pulling out some of that green. I can pump in a little more yellow to make it a little more warm, but this is 12,800, one two hundredth of a second using a 24 to 70, 2.8 VR is off. I actually don't like the VR on that lens, the new Nikon lens. So you guys can download this file, tweak it yourself. I'm just taking the time to do how I normally would do it. Um, not very bright in there at all. This is at 25,600. Of course, there's, there's grain, but uh, when you wanna make it rain, grain. But if I was to print this out, you would not see the grain unless you got, well, you got really close to it, you would see the grain. And this is one thing you don't want to do. As you start getting the clarity, you can see that it tightens up. You'll see more grain there. Actually, let me go to the dehaze. That is something that they do a ton of these days. Oh, God, no. Get out of here, dehaze. Sometimes it works well, and in other cases, it's not meant to be working. So that's a winner shot to me. Pull back just a little bit, because it is dark in there. So off by like a half a stop. But see, this is not bad. And I also don't touch noise reduction. Personally, don't touch noise reduction. This is 25,600 and it's fully usable. It's absolutely insane. I do not touch noise reduction. And I'll tell you why. Because it makes everything smooth. And I don't like when it makes it smooth. Like to me, I don't want that. I don't want that glowy McGlowerson look. He's a rough and tumble man. I want it to look like grain. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. This is now 102,000. 400. You can see how the flicker in the background is playing havoc, wreaking havoc on this. But let's just bring this image back. 102,400. You could not do this, obviously, a couple years ago. This brings the grain out a little more. But yes, now we're seeing some noise. Now we're seeing some grain. It's 12,000, it's, it's 102,000, for God's sake. If anybody has a problem with this, you shouldn't have a problem with it. So yes, we're gonna zoom in here and you're gonna see grain and you're gonna see noise. But look, I was at 1 1600th of a second at 3.5 with the uh, 24 to 72.8. Yes, not exactly where you would want to be shooting. Again, test shots. This is what everybody wanted to see. 3,276,800. Of course it sucks, but it has an image. Check this out, watch this. We're gonna make something show up here. That's interesting, actually tightening up the grain with the clarity. Let's see what the, the, the luminance actually does in this case, the noise reduction. No, I'm gonna leave it with the grain. I want it to rain grain. 
Let's see how much worse that makes it. Not that bad. Again, guys, three million. You can't sit here and tell me that this is this is not usable. I could sit here and tell you this is not usable, but this isn't a normal situation. If you're outside at night and you needed to get something, the funny thing is, we could probably use this as a surveillance camera and capture this guy if he did something wrong because we can see his face. We can't see the scar though, the uh, the hash thingy that he just did. But look, this is three million. I'm shooting at one sixty-four hundredth of a second at f five. That's just insanity. Anyway, keep moving on. The next one is what I actually like the most. I did turn off the background light for this just to have light coming in from the front. It is a hell of a lot better. I should have done that for these. Turn off the light in the background, but whatever. I left it on. In this case, I turned it off. This is 81,275, and it's absolutely usable. This is one step down from the top, which is the 102,000. Look at this image. This is absolutely, incredibly amazing. It's usable. And I'm gonna edit it. And you can download all these raw files, don't you forget that. You can play with this file and see what you like, see if you like it, but look at this. I may not wanna do this though, this time, actually. I do like what's happening around his head though. It's just little shadows in the background to bring it back. No, I like it tighter with the black. You gotta understand, this is over at the Fro Factory. We had no lights on at this point, just window light coming in. Look at this. Yes, I'm zoomed in. This is 81,275. Perfectly fine. If I needed to shoot, again, 1 250th of a second at F5. Of course I could drop the ISO by going down from F5 to 4 to 3.2 to 2.8, go two stops basically, or one, it's, it's about two stops. And I could drop from 81,000 to 40,000 to 25,000, even that's insane. But this is absolutely 180,000 million percent usable. Remember that. All right, here we're gonna go through. We got 81,275 again. The color not so good on this one. You got all those other lights messing with it. But this looks like, honestly, this looks like 12,000, sorry, 1,280 in my D4, sorry, 1,280 in my old D2XS. Talk about grain and noise. This is, this is usable. 81,275. Go download the file, see for yourself. Black and white would look cool too. I'm just messing. Um, 51,200. Just check my time here real quick. All right, eight minutes. Again, you can go over to the website if you want to skip past all this and just see the final edits, but you can also download the raw files. Remember, they're about 44 megs each. This is, this is 51,200. This is 81,275. We are shooting at places that you would never have ever thought possible um, and get usable images. Again, I'm not taking away the noise. I'm not taking away the grain. That's just my, my thing. You can do whatever you want with the file. That's your style and your choice. 25,600. Now look, 25,600, look how clean this looks at 25,600. Let me go back here real quick, medium. Okay, just tweaking. Dude, 25,600. This is, this is, this is insanity reigns as Perry Farrell would say. Look how tight this is. Look how tight this is. This is insane. Now remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Having the ISO go high doesn't mean you need to shoot there. Having the ISO go high though, to help you get an image and have it be extremely usable is important. But I also want you to remember that 
Whatever camera you have and whatever you're capturing with, if you capture the decisive moment, it doesn't matter what it's taken with. It's that moment that was captured. Nobody sits there and says, oh, I wish that picture wasn't so grainy. If you captured the most incredible moment ever, nobody says that. Nobody comes back and says, oh, I wish I had the D5 for that. Just remember that stuff. But this is awesome. This is highly usable. Now we're at 25,600 for a portrait. Coming in even tighter. Look at, look at how tight this is. See, to tell really how a portrait is doing, like, now we're filling the frame with a shot. That's what it's about. Oh, my God, the black and white would look cool. I like the color. I love the color coming out of this. Look at the, the, the I, don't know, I don't know shit about dynamic range, to be honest with you. All I know is I take pictures, and if they look good, that's what matters. And this is how I tweak them. This is an awesome-looking headshot to me. 25,600 ISO, 200 millimeters on the 70 to 202.8, one four hundredth of a second at 3.2. You can see that there is so, that there's, we're void of light. Now this is the next one, this is 81,000, watch this, boom. 81,275 people. You tell me this isn't usable? You tell me that this doesn't look better than, than most cameras at 3,200? Wow. This is what you're paying for. Yes, it's a $6,500 body. This is the improvement that you get. The D4S couldn't do this. There's very few cameras that can do this. I don't even think the 1DX Mark II is going to play up in this field, but that has other features that are definitely positives over this. But this, 81,275 people, this is insane. So in my excitement, I forgot to edit this in black and white, and then I sat here and I edited it in black and white, and I absolutely love it. I'm printing it right now over on the Canon printer, the uh, ProGraph 1000, but this was the color. Here's the color, it's good, but man, that just blows it up right here. Let me run you through my history settings here. There's a virtual copy. I'm just gonna run you through the, the, the changes I made. See this as it changes? Boom, boom. Yep, you can see it get much tighter. These are the changes that I made, boom printing it right now on the printer. It looks fantastic. Go check it out on the Snapchat. Um, but this, I wanted to go black and white, and this is it. I, I love the black and white more than the color. Which do you like, color, black and white? What are your edits going to be? Go get those files. Let's get back and finish up this video. Anyway, the last one is just showing you at 16,000 ISO. I'm going to get rid of this. Don't feel like, ed well, all right, fine, Jared. Just say that. This is just like a normal shot. Like, you want to get in there at a certain... You need to get a certain shot, so here it is. This is a guy working, 16,000 ISO, 1 250th of a second at 3.2 is a very reasonable place to shoot, especially with the 70 to 200. You want to, don't really want to shoot below 200th of a second. This is my favorite shot. Better than this, for whatever reason, the neck position is better. But look at this. 81,275 ISO right there. This, I could print as large as I want, this is an amazing print uh, file. I'm going to print this out and actually go take it to him. Wow. This is a real world example. I'm getting sick and tired of all of the other places out there just, just putting out examples of trash cans in the corners. And, you know, when you go and look for issues with cameras, you're going to find issues. I went out to do a shoot. I, I, every shoot that I go out to do that's a test, I go out. To, as if it was an actual photo shoot I'm getting paid for. Because the only way to test these things is in real world situations. This is unbelievable at 81,275 ISO. Go download the full res exported JPEGs. Go download the RAW files. You do need to have Lightroom, the latest edition, in order to open those RAW files. I have a link over on the website you can download. It's fronosphoto.com slash CCLR. If you need a trial of Lightroom, you can get a free trial just to open these files. No obligation. You just sign up for a, a free trial. Anyway, go get these files, download them. Let me see your results. What do you think about this? I will leave it at that. If you enjoy these editing videos, please let me know down below and I will leave it there. I'd love to get your feedback. Give it a thumbs up too if you like it and don't forget to subscribe. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.